Hey guys, this is Frank from Detect America. Uh, recently, with the sale of our electrolysis units, and we've sold hundreds of them over the past year, uh, the basic unit I've been getting a lot of questions about. Um, the Even with reading the instructions that are provided and putting on the page, a lot of people are getting confused when it's your first experience with electrolysis and uh, you're, you're looking at the unit, I understand a lot of times it can get confusing. So as a little addendum to the instructions that are on the uh, Detect-America website, we're going to do a quick little video and show you how to set up and operate your basic uh, electrolysis unit. Uh, should make it a lot easier for you and we'll show you how to be successful at it. Okay guys, so here's the basic electrolysis unit. Let me show it to you. Uh, this is basically when you get, uh, occasionally they'll come in a different box, but this is the basic setup. You have one LED on top, you have one on-off power button, and two terminals. One is marked CAT for catalyst metal, the other is marked COIN, which is for your, attached to your COIN or to your small relic. Uh, these are powered by 9-volt batteries, and also you can switch it out to a 12-volt battery pack, which comes with it, it's contained inside. Now, those of you who have watched the video that's been posted on YouTube and on the page uh, basic safe electrolysis you're going to notice a, a few differences here simply because we are using battery power only we aren't using a power pack that plugs into the wall so you're not going to have that reserve of, of juice that's going to come out of the wall and back up a short or a fault in these these are 100% powered by battery power so there's a lot less amperage pushing this current through the tank um, it makes it very safe and uh, we'll, we'll clean coins very, very well. It may take a little bit longer, but you have a little bit more control. That's why I like the DC-only units. So uh, I'm going to set up the basic setup for you, and I'll show you what we got. Okay, guys, again, here's the basic unit. You've seen them. If you've bought one, you know what they look like. You've seen them on the page. Uh, we, the terminals are marked cat and coin, catalyst metal and your coin. Your negative lead gets attached directly to your negative side. Your positive lead gets hooked to your catalyst side, and then from there, we'll put them into the tank. Okay, guys, so as you can see, we have the coin lead or negative side connected to our coin in the brine tank. Uh, these larger clips, let me see if I can show you the larger clips. The larger clips I just use to keep it secure against the side of the tank so they don't float around and and perhaps contact each other causing a short. The positive side, your cathode side, is connected to our piece of brine which is in the tank um, and again we have another clip securing that. We put our brine, my brine solution was pre-mixed, uh, we put just enough to cover the top of your coin. Uh, you don't want to go overboard with it, the more water you put, the more brine you put into this tank the harder the electricity is going to have to work to get to the target and may you know, decrease your voltage. So the least amount possible you can put in covering the coin. Uh, we put the targets at opposite ends. Your cathode is at one end, your anode is at the other end, and you can adjust that. If you're not getting the reaction you want, you can put them a little closer together or a little farther apart. Uh, you just want to keep a safe distance to start. We always start go over here. We always start with 9 volts in our, in our unit. Uh, it's a good, safe, low voltage. And as the coin becomes stable, we're stabilizing the core, uh, and, and you're sure it's stable over a period of time, when we can up the voltage. It comes with a 12-volt power pack. We can up the voltage. Uh, it's great for bigger pieces, bigger coins, bigger artifacts, and it's great if you have to tweak the color or you decide you want to plate it. A lot of people want to plate them for displays. So that's what... Uh, that's what you can use the 12 volt power pack for. So we're all set. We have our, our coin in place, we have our catalyst in place, our about 9 volt batteries in, and that's it. Once you have that there, the only thing left to do is turn it on. One button operation, hit the button, as long as that red light comes on, which you can see it did come on, as long as that red light comes on, you have electrolysis taking place. The electricity is saturating and flowing through the circuit, through the tank. If that red light does not come on, that means you don't have something hooked up properly. Uh, either the connection is weak on your coin, your catalyst, or actually in, even inside. Just make your adjustments and until that light comes on. That light will not come on unless your connection is made and your circuit is complete. So, we're running. We're running at low voltage, 9 volts. We're going to take a break. We'll come back in a few, and I'll show you what happens. Okay, guys, so we're back. 
Uh, we let this one cook for about 30 minutes. I usually pull out at, at about 15. Uh, the tank is a little bit bigger and a little bit more volume of water than I usually use. So, just to show you, you can see how cloudy the water is getting. Now, your first two or three sessions in, uh, we're gonna, we're, when the tank gets to this point, we're going to pull it out. We'll do a gentle wash on the coin. We'll clean off the carbon and we'll change out the water just to keep the electricity flowing nice and, and free in the tank. Um, and, we're, and we're using, just so you know, we're using 9 volts of power. We're keeping our amperage low. Can you clean these coins at higher amps? Yes, I see people do it all the time. 1 and 2 volts. Here's the problem. Uh, I'm sorry, 1 or 2 amps. Here's the problem. When you use higher amperage, even if you're using a low voltage, the amperage is pushing the electricity into your target too fast. And what happens is you clean the outside of the coin, and the coin looks really pretty, really fast, but you haven't stabilized the coin. Uh, the most important thing about running a coin through electrolysis is stabilizing the core. That's what's causing the coin to discolor. If you pull the coin out of the ground and the core was completely stable, it wouldn't be very discolored at all. It would have nice detail to it, the color wouldn't be that much off. The fact that it's destabilized from the core outward and is falling apart. So what we're doing, most importantly, is getting this electricity to pass through the center of the coin. Once that is cured, then the, the, it works its way outward, the color begins to improve, the dirt will fall off. So you don't necessarily want to do this quickly. Uh, low, slow, low amperage is the key to uh, uh, curing this coin so it lasts you another 100 years. So with that being said, we're going to kill the power. Let's pull back a little bit. We'll kill the power. Power's off, light's off, there's no current going through it. And we'll pull out our coin. Now, I took a peek at this coin already, and I'm getting a little excited because, you can see or not, if you look at the details on the coin, you're starting to see what looks like silver popping up. Now, I assumed that this was a copper strike simply because in 1989, we found 306 of these cobs in, in one spot in a place in New Orleans on a dig for University of Pennsylvania. 99% of them were copper. This is only the second one that looks like it's going to be silver that came out of that whole thing. And this is one of the most detailed coins. I, I love this coin, it's beautiful. So it looks like we may get real lucky here and pull out a silver coin, but that's cool. And I'm, I'm gonna show you why we didn't care if it was silver or if it was copper by how we're looking at it. So anyway, we're going to take the coin, we're going to run it under some warm water, just a gentle rinse to get some of the debris that may have floated onto it from the electrolysis tank. We're going to change this water out to fresh water, and we're going to start the process over again. And the conductivity will, will resume at a much faster pace, and eventually we'll leave it in there for a couple hours. But then we'll be back in a minute, and we'll start this process over. Okay guys, as you can see, we've changed out the water. The, the brine solution, we've rinsed our coin in just a little bit of warm water just to take any residue off it. And we've actually wiped down the carbon piece too. The less contaminants we put back in the tank, the better we are. So we're back at it. Everything is hooked back up. We start the power again. And I'll come back in a few minutes and show you how the reaction is taking place much quicker now. Okay guys, we are actually on our, our, our third process now. It's going very, very well. Uh, and now we're, we're very excited, and I'll show you why. Because at the end of our third process, it's becoming quite obvious that we have a silver coin here. It's cleaning up very well. So now that we're the, the color is really coming out nicely, the dirt is really starting to fall away, we're seeing much more detail on the coin. What we're going to do is we're going to open up the unit, and we're going to attach the 12-volt power pack. It'll increase the amperage a little bit, and now we'll really start to bring the color back up right before we're, we're done with this coin. So I'm going to shut her down. I'm going to swap out the battery packs, and we're going to cook her on the last leg of this thing with, uh, with 12 volts. Okay, so we've shut everything down. We've pulled the terminals, and uh, we've taken out the screws. So we're going to open up the unit, and you can see we have a 9-volt connected here. We'll pop that one off, and with the unit, we supply a 12-volt power pack. You fill it with AA batteries. So now we're going to attach the 12 volt power pack, just like you would, just like you would with a nine. Just connects just like a nine volt connects. We're going to place it back inside. Okay. 
Now we're ready to go with our 12 volt. We cooked the coin for four sessions. The fourth session really brought up detail and color. Because it came up that clean, we know that our core is now secure. The, the, the core is stabilized. Um, if we left it just like this, it'll last another 100 years, no problem. But what we're going to do now is we're going to cook it one more shot at 12 volts. It'll really brighten the silver surface up. And then uh, we'll do a clean on it, real light wash, and put okay, it away. Okay, real quick, I want to show you how to set up your floating circuit, your safety circuit. Uh, with the unit, you get a third lead and, and a, a, a copper pin. Now, you don't have to use the copper pin. You can use any piece of metal you want. Uh, when you set up the safety circuit, the metal that you're using at the end of this line is not going to plate or put anything onto your coin. It's only going to receive molecules, so you don't have to worry about what type of metal you use. So... This is, if you're using the 12 volt uh, power pack, even the 9 volt power pack in some cases, if you're using an extra small container, uh, even a container smaller than this one, you'd like to, you should have a floating circuit. What this is going to do, it's going to split the voltage and amperage into two targets. So the tank will still be saturated with the electricity, but the copper pin is going to be picking up some of that amperage and electricity. It's, it's going to prevent it from arcing to your coin. So what you do is take your third lead, which is going to be your safety circuit, connect it to the alligator clip, which is connected to the coin side of your uh, electrolysis unit. Take the other end and connect it to the copper pin and place that in the center of the tank. You want that to lay pretty much between your coin and your catalyst metal. At that point, turn it on, let it run the way you would do normally, and that's going to give you a little bit of a layer of extra protection against arcing to your coin and potentially causing damage. Okay, so we're hooked up. Let's put the power back on and show you that we're cooking pretty much the exact same way we did with the 9 volts. As you can see, the tank is going to dirty up very fast now. We've increased the voltage, we've increased the amperage just a little. We're still only operating at probably a half to three quarters of an amp, which is more than enough. Too much amperage is going to coat the outside of the coin and not going to clean the inside of the coin. But uh, you know, she's, she's cooking good. We're going to let this run now. She's very secure. It's very safe now. You can, If you overcook it, it's fine. You're really not going to overcook it at this point, not with this voltage and amperage. So we're going to let this guy sit for about a half hour. I'm going to pull her out. We'll give it a quick uh, clean, a quick wash, and I'll show you what it looks like and show you how to break down the unit for, uh, for storage. Okay, guys, here's our coin. And you can see it came up really nice. There is a little bit of discoloration around it, that black. That is not part of the coin as so much as it's part of debris that was floating around the tank when you pulled it out. Kind of settles on the coin. So our final step in cleaning this coin is right here in your kitchen sink. Let the water run, get the water nice and hot, especially for silver. Uh, once that water gets really hot, we'll show you. We take a very basic over-the-counter toothpaste, and we put a dab of it on the wet coin. Key phrase here, this coin must be wet. Do not do it on a dry coin. On a wet coin, this toothpaste will float along the top. Uh, many of your jewelers, this is their secret recipe for doing a quick polish on coins. On jewelry, you want to do it dry because it takes out anomalies. On coins, you want to do it wet because you don't want to take anything off the surface. You just want to float on the top. It'll uh, neutralize the salt. It'll get rid of some of that black and just generally clean the surface of the coin, but only while it's wet. So once you get your water nice and hot, put a little dab on there, wet the coin, put a dab on there. And very, very, very gently, don't gouge into the coin, just very gently swirl it along the top on both sides. And then we rinse it. Rinse it real well. You don't want this stuff sitting on the coin and, and starting your degrade process again. And that's it, guys. That's the coin we started with. Uh, looks a lot better. One of the cool things that we just figured out is that this is Spanish. It has the Madrid stamp on the bottom. I never knew that before. Can I drop it? 
Uh, so we're going to take a close look at this underneath the scope and see if we can't tell. I, I think it's a two real, but in my research, I'm seeing a three. This is possibly a three real, which I've never found a three real coin before. So uh, that's it. We're going to go back out in the shop. I'm going to show you how to box everything up, close her up for storage. Okay, guys, so one more time. There's our coin. Came out beautiful. Silver, and I believe a three real, but we're going to have to check into that a little bit. So we're done. So here we go. We're going to open up our, our unit. Disconnect our battery pack. I store the 12 volt in sideways so the terminals can't touch anything. I take the 9 volt. I do the exact same thing with 9 volt. I store it the app opposite way. Then I close it back up. The guts of your machine are coated with a non-conductive resin so they can't make any kind of contact with the batteries uh, cause, cause an arc. We close her back up, put the screws back in, and you're done. Okay, so the bottom line, guys, and using the, the uh, 912 ECS electrolysis unit, start off with your 9-volt battery in a small container, especially for coins that are made of uh, bronze or copper. Uh, you don't want to go high voltage or high amperage, as you'll coat the outside of the coins with the, with the catalyst, and it'll never penetrate and cure the inside. So always start off with your 9. Once the color starts to reveal itself, uh, if you want to speed up the process at that point, you can jump to your 12 volt. That's going to increase your amperage by a little bit and the voltage, and you'll, you'll finish out the process rather quickly, and it'll be quite beautiful. Your brine solution, always use, never use uh, iodized salt. Always ground sea salt and baking powder. Uh, for those of you who don't wish to purchase one of these units, that's why we put the free directions on the video on YouTube. Go to the YouTube channel, Detect America, and search for a basic safe electrolysis unit. And it'll show you how you can put one together, keep it safe, and, uh, and not worry about you know, the arcing uh, or, or improper metals, improper catalyst, improper uh, brine solution. Uh, that's about the size of it, guys. Uh, enjoy it. Have a good time, clean lots of coins, get out there and detect America.